Oh, my light. Oh, I can't believe this. Almost forgot my light. Look at that. Hey, professional. The light changes everything. Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. I finished one drawing last year, Solitude, which I'm really, really proud of. And so in this video, I thought I'd take you through the process of that drawing from start to finish. Um, I'm gonna show you the techniques I was using, the tools I was using, and just some of the decisions I was making as I was drawing the, the piece um, and some of the challenges I was running into as well. Also, a huge thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested as well, I have a small announcement at the end of the video, so stick around to, to hear that. But yeah, let's jump in. Starting out, I want to do my background first in this drawing. So I've lightly sketched out an outline and I'm going over it with a darker pencil to create a, a clean solid line to follow. I use a mixture of graphite powder and a solvent to do my backgrounds. I, I started doing this recently and it's been a really nice quick way for me to do my backgrounds. It's a huge time saver and another perk is that it leaves a really clean finish. So it's really uniform, it's a little bit more um, uniform than the way I was applying my backgrounds with the, the cotton wool and graphite powder. And another thing is that it's a wet medium, so there isn't a lot of dust that's floating around in the air that lands on your drawing and dirties it up. The problem is solvents aren't ideal to use in this quantity. It's super toxic, so please wear a mask if you want to try and do this as well, and gloves because the, the turpentine can, can absorb through your skin and over months or years it can really lead to a lot of health problems. I've poisoned myself a few times in the past and I have a huge sensitivity to it now, so I, I actually can't spend any time in the studio without getting a really bad headache. So make sure that the, the space you're working in is also very well ventilated. Moving on to the hands in the background, I want to try and get a very blurry, out of focus kind of look. So everything here will be very soft and I'll try and avoid any harsh lines and contrast. Um, I'm mostly going to be working with cotton wool because that's a very soft way of blending. And then the slightly more detailed blurry things I'll use, <laughs> graphite sticks as well. I'll use a small amount of graphite and apply it very lightly to try and adjust the tone and make it slightly darker. If it's too dark, I can always go back into it with compressed air to try and erase some of the, the graphite. The, the key thing here is to try and get a uniform smooth finish. I wasn't happy with the tone I was getting with graphite powder, so I decided to go back into it, into the darker areas with my wet graphite to try and get a smoother look. I also, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work out because it generally looks a lot different to how my normal graphite is applied with the cotton wool or blending stumps. So I took a massive risk here, but thankfully it worked out. Now to clean up the edges of the hand in the foreground, I'm going to work them in with my eraser um, and also with my stencil. I was asked recently by someone on the Patreon page if there was a way to stop graphite from going underneath the stencil. It's very difficult to avoid this happening, but the only way to do it is to just try and work very carefully and very consciously when you're working with a stencil. Make sure there aren't any creases in your, I think it's cellophane or whatever plastic you're using, but make sure there aren't any creases for the graphite to slide under and also just be conscious of the direction that you're pushing the graphite. If you push it into the stencil too much, obviously graphite will slip underneath. So you just need to clean it regularly to make sure you don't leave any marks. Moving on to the details in the hands, I'm first creating some reference points for creases in the skin. I'm trying to avoid any artificial looking shapes here. I want, I want to try and adhere closely to the more organic lines of the skin. Once I've got some reference points for my, my details, I'm gonna alternate back into getting my larger shadows and highlights. Uh, the way I set this up is by first just applying uh, dark graphite, so 8B, um, directly with, with the pencil onto the paper, and then blending that in to get closer to the soft skin texture that I'm looking for. I'll alternate between the details and the larger tones until I start getting closer to the realism that I'm looking for. It's important not to get caught up entirely in the details because it's very easy to get lost in it and forget that the main goal here is to capture the larger shapes. I'm using a combination of pencils, cotton wool and blending stumps and then also some different erasers. The, the cotton wool is for the larger shapes obviously, the blending stumps are for the smaller details that still need to be quite soft. Um, you can actually get really precise with these and 
Lastly, I'm using a pencil for the sharpest little tones and, and creases in the skin. Often then I'll go back into it with a kneadable eraser or a Tombow Mono Zero eraser to just pick up the, the highlights for any shadows and um, yeah, just get little like fine hairs and, and details like that. I try not to have harsh details, especially with things like skin and hands. These wrinkles, while very clearly visible, are very gentle and you can ruin your works by enhancing them too much. I think with any kind of observation, you start to put emphasis on things that catch your eye and mostly that's gonna be contrast and stuff. So I'm using a soft tool to try and achieve a soft uh, texture, which is my preferred method. Fingerprints are tricky. Again, it's easy to draw them in too dark. So I first mark them out with my 8B graphite stick and then blend over them with cotton wool to soften the marks. I use 8B here even though it's the darkest graphite, but mostly because it's the softest graphite. So it gets picked up by the cotton wool quite a bit and leaves more of a softer tone than if I used a 6B or a 2B. Now onto the rhino. I'm first going to try and outline the larger shapes and get my guideline on where all the proportions need to be. In this case, I want to try and follow the contours of the skin. So I'm actually gonna draw in the wrinkles as guidelines. I'm using the technique I mentioned before, drawing the details in with a soft pencil and then going over it with cotton wool to give me a softer, more integrated look. I can bring them out again later by adding highlights to these creases or even just going back into them with pencil again. I'm also using cotton wool to just try and get volume and mass on the drawing. I'm using it to try and figure out what the larger shapes are. It's also really easy to erase cotton wool, so for me it's a nice way to very freely work and try and capture the larger volumes. The glass was an interesting problem to try and solve. I wanted to try and get the cracks perfect, but I also didn't want to have to outline them in graphite because that can lead to really patchy work, um, especially if I'm trying to get the background to look uniform and soft. So my plan was to try and sketch them in and then press really hard into the paper so it would leave an indent. I then would work over it with the graphite with cotton wool and get like a, a nice smooth finish. And then finally, very carefully, go back in with a mechanical eraser following the indented marks that I'd made in the paper. I had to constantly sharpen it to make sure that the lines were fine and clean. I'm using compressed air to try and lift out some of the graphite again in the glass. I didn't want it to leave patchy marks, so I found that compressed air is a really nice way of erasing in a very soft, more uniform way, rather than using a kneadable eraser. Again, for the skin on the rhino, I'm using a similar technique to what I used to get the hands done. I'm drawing in the main details and then going over them with cotton wool to get the larger shapes, alternating with this technique until I'm happy with the relationship. Then I'll use my razor to pull out the highlights and give the wrinkles some more shape. I'm trying to keep in mind what the contours of the skin would look like, having them follow a similar shape so that it retains the, the body of the fold. If you work with like straight lines or lines that don't actually make sense to the, the way that the skin is pulling, it starts to make your drawing look flat really quickly. For the grass the rhino is standing on, I'm more interested in the shapes in between the marks that I'm making with pencil now. I'll go over it with cotton wool to soften it up and then pull out the highlights and repeat the process till I get closer to what I want. I really had no clue how to get this texture. I, I was looking for ways in how to do it and so I just kind of jumped in and started doing this but I wasn't really happy with how it came out. So. What actually happened was when I'd finished everything and I was looking at the drawing, I then came back into this part and made it look a little bit better, but you'll see how that looks in the finished stage of the drawing. This is exactly something that I try to encourage people to keep in mind. We really might not know how to do a certain thing or like how to achieve a specific texture, but by doing it and trying to, by trying to do it and seeing what works, what doesn't work, you often figure out the solution, you know, further along the line. So yeah, this was a, a really good case of that. And now the glass below the hands was actually quite tricky. Again, it was a, a texture I hadn't really done before. I needed it to be really blurry because it's behind the main subject. And it also had some sharp contrast in it. So I just took a guess and thought that maybe by using the kneadable eraser in this way, I'd be able to pull out the, the highlights. And fortunately this time it worked, but I've often run into these things and it doesn't quite work. And you have to just come up with a plan B or plan C with how to get these textures. And then lastly, I just went over the lines of the terrarium, neatening everything up, making them darker and getting some of the details in the bars.
Before I end this video, I just want to thank the sponsor Squarespace. They have been helping me out for a really long time, not only just with this channel and sponsoring these videos, but in my career. I think it's it's so important for artists and creatives to have an online portfolio to help clients find them and to make it easy for clients to get in touch with them. And for me, I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. So small announcement, I have started a Patreon page. It's a small community of artists and people wanting to get into drawing. I share with you the tools I'm using, a bunch of short videos and things, and more just a bit of a community for us to encourage each other and inspire each other to, to keep working and um, yeah, it's it's a cool space. So if you're interested in joining us, you can find us on Patreon. I'm going to add a link in the description below. And um, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing you there. I hope you guys found this video helpful as well. It's really nice for me to go over my, my drawing process really slowly and try and find words for the way that I'm working as well. It's a, a work in progress for me on the side, but it's, it's really cool to be able to share that with you. So if you found it helpful, leave a like. It helps the channel out in a massive way. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.